This is an Albion Online tier list for the Axe Weapon Tree. Let's get right into it, starting with the Battle Axe. The Battle Axe has the Blood Bandit ability, where you deal damage from a range. You can throw the weapon twice. The more bleed charges on an opponent, the more damage you will deal with the first hit, not the second hit. But you will also receive more healing from the second hit with more charges. Here's what the skill looks like. There's throw one and throw two with no charges. So how does it measure up on the tier list? We'll be covering many different aspects of, so of uh, Albion Online. Not just PvE, not just PvP, but many different aspects. So a tier list like, like this makes more sense to, to utilize, okay? So starting with solo PvE, the Battle Axe is really, really, really good. It's totally worth using. Open world mobs die really quick to the E. The W and the Q spell are all fun amazing for solo PvE, like solo dungeons, open world mob farming, and so on and so forth, right? But what makes the Battle Axe extra special to give it that extra little oomph towards the best is the fact that it heals you, which means you can solo group content with this bad boy, and even solo certain group dungeon bosses all by yourself. And that makes it really good for solo PvE. What about group PvE? Axes, they're all pretty damn good with group, uh, for group PvE. They're not absolutely the best. All right, the axe in question for groups, it's, it kind of works. You don't really need to heal yourself in a group setting because you have a dedicated healer for that. Uh, so there are better axes to bring to group PvE content, okay? Uh, solo PvP, the axe is a, is a monster. It is absolutely worth using uh, with the self-healing and the ranged attacks. It is just beastly to fight against. It is. It sucks to fight against a, a battle axe user because they will constantly heal if they land their shots, and they deal high amounts of damage. What about group PvP? You know, it kind of works, okay? The reason why is there, there's just better axes for group content. <laughs> Almost all the other axes serve a group PvP setting better. However, for maybe like 2v2 Hellgates or something, it's it's decent, okay? It's worth using in like 2v2s and stuff like that, but for like Zerg versus Zerg, you know, faction fights, all that kind of stuff, the Battle Axe is not really the greatest unless you're just playing by yourself and you don't care about anyone around you and you're doing your own thing, in which case it's absolutely worth using. The Axe uh, used in like skinning, it's okay for skinning. It'll keep you, your health up. It, it's got a ranged pull, two ranged pulls actually. It's not the worst. Uh, it's also decent for arenas because it makes you hard to kill, it makes you last longer in fights, so it's it's worth using all around. The next weapon is the Great Axe. The tier 8 variant is called the Hand of Core, but it is a Great Axe. It lets you deal a whirlwind type ability, letting you move while attacking, you cannot be interrupted, and you can move while channeling, and the more consecutive hits that you hit on an enemy, the more damage it deals. It also uh, takes mana based on how many times you spin. Here's what it looks like. It's a, it's one of the easier to use abilities in the game. It deals huge amounts of damage. Out of all the axes, it actually deals the most damage, believe it or not. Uh, let's get into that tier list and see how it does. Okay, so for solo PvE, out of all the axes for dungeons and open world mob clearing, it's the best axe, okay? It's by far the best axe for soloing dungeons, for soloing open world mobs, because it deals the most damage, it's super easy to use, you can attack while moving, and so on and so forth. This was my go-to weapon for soloing group PvE content by myself. Not bosses, but just mobs. I moved on to stronger weapons overall. It's very, very strong when compared to all the other axes. As far as all the other weapons, it's definitely worth using. You don't want to pass up the Great Axe, unless you have something better in mind, out of outside the axe weaponry, that is. For group PvE, same thing. If, if this is in my group, I'm happy. It's dealing lots of damage. It's constantly applying bleeds to everything. It's just a nice asset to have in PvE. Uh, I would dare say that it could be the best uh, for group PvE as well. Uh, though the Daybreaker combined with a few other items in group PvE does make the Daybreaker a little bit better. But still, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go and put it right here in the middle between the two. Because it is, it is damn good. It is absolutely... A, a fine weapon to use in PvE. Solo PvP, a lot of people are going to say it's the worst. A lot of people are going to say the Great Axe is garbage, it has a low win rate in Corrupted, that it's hard to deal with. I'm going to say it's worth using. I'm going to say it's really, really good because you can't interrupt it, and if someone does not have a defensive answer for your Whirlwind, you basically win the fight. You at, like 
You just have to bait their defensives with your Q and your W or extend the fight until you have your E back up before their defensives are up, okay? So it is, it's pretty strong. I, I make it work. I've been making it work for years. It's very, very strong. Group PvP, you can have a lot of fun with this one, okay? Because you are hitting multiple targets consistently, all right? It's not the best. Uh, that would go for the Daybreaker. Or not the Daybreaker, but um, the Realm Breaker, my bad. Um, but it's, it's up there. It's one of the better ones you can use. It isn't too niche for skinning and just general mob killing, like for gatherers. It's, it's worth using. It doesn't have a range pull, unfortunately, but out of all the other axes, this one is, it's going to kill things the quickest once you have them pulled. It's great for arenas. I actually used to be really, really high ranked in arenas, uh, when using the Great Axe, believe it or not. It is a fine weapon to use all around. Next up, we have the Halberd. All right, which deals a circular rend attack, dealing damage. It also uh, spreads bleed charges over all your targets, and it also reduces the healing received due to the bleed debuff. Now, this is kind of a niche weapon for group PvP and not too much else. Here's what the attack looks like. You can see that it the damage isn't quite there. Let's go to that tier list. This one's a little more disappointing. I'm sorry, guys. But for solo PvE, just... It sucks. It's it's pretty bad. It's one of the lower end damaging axes. <laughs> it's by far the worst damaging axe you can pick. Uh, it's it just it's a crapshoot. It sucks for PVE. The E hits hard enough to kill lower tier mobs, sure, but it, there's just almost every axe is better than this one for PVE. Group PVE, you don't need to really spread bleed stacks. As cool as it sounds, it's not really useful. It's not a lot of damage. Get that crap out of my groups. Solo PvP, man, this is the worst performing weapon I've reviewed so far on this channel. <laughs> uh, your, you, you your E deals less damage than every other weapon uh, for axes. You don't, you're not spreading your bleed to, in a solo fight. Group PvP, it's a little different. Okay, this serves a niche to stack and spread bleeds. That's pretty much it. Um, there's a, like just having one or two in your army is good enough. Uh, just to get that little bit of a healing debuff, mainly for the healing debuff. Uh, you're, you're basically, your build as a halberd is a healing debuffer, so it's more so on your W, uh, and your E is just kind of there as collateral, I guess. So let's uh, just scoot it right there, yeah. For skinners, yeah, it's just, it kind of works, man. It, like, like, animals are weak enough as it is, so you don't have to deal a lot of damage, so the E damage doesn't really matter. Your, the bleed ticks, it's not going to matter because you're going to be using your hide poison anyway. Uh, again, Halberd just sucks. The Carrion Collar is just straight up a better Halberd, okay? It's just straight up, okay? For one, the, the Carrion Collar launches an AoE, or a line attack, rather. It looks like this, okay? That deals more damage than the Halberd. It also does its own bleed, kind of, and it does its own debuff, okay? So this is a 30% healing debuff, whereas the Halberd's bleed is a 12. Uh, you also combine it with the Battle Rush for another 20. Again, so the Carrying Caller also is the role of debuff everyone so they can't get healed in, in an army fight, in a big group PvP fight. But because the E does more damage, and it's, it's ranged, and it's an AoE, a better AoE than a circular one, it just beats the Halberd at everything. So let's go to the tier list, and, uh, you know, we're just going to move it up a little bit. It, it's not that much stronger. For PvE, same as the Halberd, don't just don't use it for PvE at all. Group PvE, get it out of my groups. The 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 bleed tick is nice, but there's there's so many better weapons out there for that. Uh, better axes even. Solo PvP, you know it kind of works. You can kind of poke with it. You can kind of play range. You can kind of play safe. You have uh, you, you there's so many different ways to play axes, and I don't see a lot of people playing carry. And you can actually stalk people stay out of their range of their melee and just poke them down with E, so it's viable. It's not the worst, it's not really worth using either. Group PvP, you gotta have them in your army, unfortunately, or otherwise healers will just um, save everyone's life. So it's it's kind of mandatory, but it's, I don't know, man, it's just, it's not fun, it, it's just a stupid mandatory weapon. Skinning, it actually pulls mobs decently for skinning, it actually, you know, the debuff, Stacks with the poison too. It's 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 way better than Halberd for for skinning pur purposes, k killing animals. But arenas, I've never really seen this used effectively in arenas. So I'm gonna just put it like down here. I've actually like seen this only a few times, and out of out of like thousands of arena matches, I don't know. It's a very niche weapon. The Infernal Sith or Scythe, however you pronounce it, and wherever you are from, 
does two circular AoEs, and it has an execute property. So if they're under, your target is under 40% health, it'll deal additional damage, okay? So here's what it looks like. One circle, one big hit, and then a second hit, which it, yeah, it hit the dummy. Um, but the dummy is not below 40% life, so it didn't take much damage. Now, I just want to tell you right now, through multiple damage testing, that the Infernal Scythe is weaker than the Great Axe if the Great Axe gets every hit off, whereas this one is kind of surprising, right? This one is meant to throw an opponent off guard and front load all of your damage immediately into the opponent when they are low enough to be executed. So, to the tier list we go. You know, it's, it's, it's okay for PvE, it's not better than the Great Axe. Um... It, there's not a lot to say about it. It's just a crappier Great Axe. Great Axe does everything this weapon does better in PvE. Uh, it also is it's faster in general, just more mana efficient. Everything else, it does like there's no reason to use this over Great Axe. There's just not. Group PvE, you could bring it, I guess. It's the same thing, right? Like if if you're in my party with one, that's fine, I guess. It's a little bit harder to time the execute than to just spam Great Axe spins. Which, uh, Great Axe, like I said, has still, even even with the Execute, will do more damage. Solo PvP, it's a sneaky boy. Like I said, uh, this thing actually might be better than Great Axe at, at PvP, just simply because it's so... It's, it's just so easy to get off. Like, once they're below that 40%, you hit them with that second hit, and they most likely die. And a lot of people don't have defensives or ways to withstand that single hit. So it, it's a sneaky way to just kill people really quickly with... Some kind of meme gank spec. Group PvP, uh, I've seen this thing just delete entire entire circles of people. Like, you're just like, chopping the crops, okay? It's nutty. Um, like, whenever the tanks dive in and the meteors drop and everyone's blowing all their spells in the middle, and you come in with the Infernal Scythe and you just, you clean up. You you are, you are like the bagum and tagum guy. It is, uh, it's pretty damn entertaining to see one of these just delete 20 dudes in one cast it's so funny uh for skinning purposes the it's really really good um because by the time that you've tagged the mobs with your hide poison they are below 40 percent life and then just this cleans them up it's it's such a clean skinning weapon though it's still compared to, to range weapons it's still you know you don't want to use melee for skinning for for arenas same thing a People in arenas melt incredibly fast, and this weapon, it, it catches them off guard. It's just, people don't really know how to time the defensive, because I guess they're not used to it. It's still kind of recent that this weapon was changed. And now we come to everyone's favorite weapon in the axe tree, by far, the Bear Paws. Possibly one of the most favored weapons in the entire game. Also a very expensive weapon. Okay, so the Bear Paws lets you leap forward, which is a movement ability. It hits for a very large amount of damage, and... It causes them to bleed true damage for quite some time. Also, hitting a player uh, just reduces the cooldown by 40%. It's insane. It's nutty. So it, it's got a low cooldown if you manage to land it. Um, so it can be a little punishing if you don't. But you can use it to escape, to engage. You can use it to disengage. There's so many uses for this weapon. It's crazy. Here's what it looks like. Like Here's the targeting uh, circle. And... Uh, there we go, we hit the target dummy, and we're just... Well, now, the target dummy is a little weird with its damage, but uh, that's going to actually hit players for a little bit more than that. Uh, believe me, trust me, it's crazy. And this is a super versatile weapon, okay? Uh, get into the tier list now. Here we go, bear paws, okay, solo PvE. Oh, man, this thing is creeping up there. It is... It's it's freaking it's freaking good, man. Because you just jump off your mount, open world mob farm. You hit them with the E. You mount up. They bleed out. They die while you're riding to the next pack. Okay, it's that good. Uh, and axes in general just really good for solo PVE. For dungeons, this thing clears dungeons insanely fast. The world record holder for clearing corrupted dungeons without an invasion is the bear paws. So it's technically the best out of all weapons in that regard for soloing corrupted dungeons. I don't know if anyone's beaten that world record, but it was like three minutes and thirty seconds with bear paws. I've yet to beat it. I've gotten close. I've gotten down to like 3 minutes and 48 seconds is my record, my personal record, and that's without Bear Paws. Um, <laughs> that video, uh, I think, is uh, members only, though. More on that later. <laughs> anyway, very amazing weapon. Group PvE, it's, it suffers a bit, okay? The E is great. You don't need mobility in group PvE. You just don't, unless you're, like, afraid of getting ganked or something, I guess, but... Um, there's two other axes that are better. It's still worth using. If you if you have this in my group, I'm not going to complain, right? It's still an axe. 
Solo PvP, oh baby. <laughs> this is this is great for killing gatherers. This is great for killing people farming open world mobs. It's the second best dismounting weapon in the entire game solo. It, it it's just a beast and a monster. Uh, like if I see someone with one of these, I'm probably not going to get out alive. Group PvP, same thing. It's just a monster. You jump in, you deal tons of damage, you jump out. You jump around the battlefield, you're cleaving large chunks of enemies in front of you for high amounts of damage. These things are great. Okay, they're like, I'm surprised I don't see more. All right, it's just good in all, all groups PvP situations. For skinning, it's kind of awkward to aim the E when mobs are all around you, and you don't really like jump on like skinning mobs. For arenas, oh man, it's the same thing. You, you jump around the battlefield, cleaning house, you can easily top the scoreboard once you learn these bad boys. If you're looking for an axe for PvP, this is it. Go get you some bear paws and start practicing right now, because they're good. And finally, we have the Realm Breaker. Okay, so this is a frontal AoE cone. Deals a large amount of damage. It also knocks enemies in the air, but it also decreases max and current health by 20% for 5 seconds. Which is... It's got some sneaky ways that, that really, really helps in PvE. There's a lot of cool tricks you can do with it as well. And in PvP, depending on the burst, you can kill stronger opponents really quickly. I'm going to explain all of that in the tier list. Let's go. Here we go. Tier list time. This thing is super cool for smashing, like, solo mobs, okay? It's, it's not better than the Great Axe, but it, it's up there. It's really damn good. You dismount, you E the, the open world mob, you, they lose, you know, that big chunk of health, and you finish them before that debuff um, goes away, and you've effectively done thousands and thousands more damage than any of, any of the other weapons, if you can kill your target within that time frame. If not, then it's not as effective. Depends on the tier of enemy you're fighting and how strong you are with the Realm Breaker, okay? Uh, but it's still a wondrous weapon. Group PvE, okay, this is where it gets weird. This is where it gets niche, okay? Because it's either here or here, and I'm going to explain both. So, if your PvE group can kill a cluster of mobs within the time that Realm Breaker's debuff affects them and your tank's debuff, who will also be lowering and shrinking and reducing the max HP of mobs through his abilities, if you can kill the mobs before that debuff ends, it is the best. It is better than Great Axe. If you can't, it's still worth bringing along because it just helps. It's just super useful. Uh, but you have to have the actual group to be able to do that. For solo PvP, this thing is a beast. Again, if you can kill your opponent during that debuff period, it's pretty damn good. Otherwise, there's a few axes that are quite better at it. Group PvP, this is a must-have. You have to have these in your groups. Uh, mandatory. The tanks jump in, these jump in, reduce the max HP of everybody inside the slow circle, and then the meteors drop, killing everyone inside. It is That's just how it works. That's reality. That's the Realm Breaker for you. For skinning mobs, same thing. If you can kill them during the debuff period, it's pretty damn good. For arenas, same thing, though arena is a little bit slower paced due to IP limiting. So I, I've i been killed by this plenty of times in arena. I've just not really seen people like top the scoreboards with, with this weapon. So it's pretty damn good. Anyway, guys, that's it for the axes. That's all the axes. You know, there's only seven axes in the game currently, whatever, right? I'm still Benji. Thanks for watching. As always, be a bro and stay swole. If you found this video interesting, give it a like because it took forever to make. And I read every single comment. Oh, I didn't show the skill. There you go. That's the realm breaker. Isn't that cool? Um, I read every single comment, so leave a comment. I'll read it. I may not reply to it, but I, I do read them all. Okay, guys? With that said, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss tomorrow's video because I make videos every single day. And because I make videos every day, I don't have any time to do anything else like have a life or get a decent paying job because I'm, I'm too stupid for that anyway. But with your help, you can help me with that. Click the thanks button to leave a monetary donation. I, I really uh, I need some new headphones, please. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for the assistance and, of course, you know, to allow me to eat better. I do appreciate guys that do donate. Click the thanks button, leave a donation or click the link in the description uh, for a Streamlabs donation. Uh, Regardless, if you want to become a channel member, uh, that is a link below. Click the join button, five bucks a month. It's like being subscribed on Twitch, but it's on YouTube, and it's better because on YouTube you get access to private, more personal videos. One of those is a really killer corrupted dungeon build that's too good for the public. 
Um, and I also have a video on how to become a YouTuber. If that interests you, if you, everyone's got a friend that wants to be a YouTuber. I think everyone out there that's younger wants to be a YouTuber. Okay. So I share all my YouTuber secrets in that video. It's 45 minutes long. I basically made it for myself. If someone hits me on the back of the head and I forget who I am and what, how to do everything. That's how detailed I went into the video. With that said, I will see you guys in tomorrow's video. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it.